Hi and welcome to our sixth video lecture. Uh, in the previous lectures, we started talking about vertical curve design for both sag and vertical curves. In the previous video, we started talking about horizontal curves and today I'm going to continue that conversation and we are going to learn a little bit more about horizontal curves and stopping side distance and how it's going to influence the design of horizontal curves. Let's start with looking at this horizontal curve that we have here. This is a very quick uh, recap. So we have this tangent line that I'm showing you here just before the PC and another tangent line. And then we are using this um, circle to connect these two tangent lines together. Um, so we talked about the degree of curve. We have an equation for that. You can see it here. Uh, the length of uh, T or tangent is equal to R into tangent of delta over 2. Delta is this angle here. Or you can see it here as well. We talked about E. We talked about M. And also we talked about how to determine the length of the curve. And each of these equations that you see here in the previous class, I showed you how you can derive them very easily by looking at different triangles here. Uh, and, and so if, if any time you need to, to get any of these, it's just you don't need to memorize them. You can just uh, think about these triangles and get them. What I want to do today is that I want to start with a, with an example problem. And in that example problem, we get to use some of these. And then we talk about uh, SSD or stopping side distance. And uh, we will conclude our discussions on horizontal curve design and pretty much chapter three. Okay, here is the example that we are going to go through today. We have a horizontal curve that is designed with a radius of uh, 2000 feet. So this is our R or RV here. Doesn't really matter now. In the future, we will see the difference between R and RV. The curve has a tangent length of 400 feet. So this is T. The PI is at station 103 and it wants us to determine the station of P sub T. So what, what you need to do always when, when you see an example like this is to start to draw it and put the information on the curve. And when you do that, all of a sudden things are going to become much easier. So what I want you to do is to pause the vehicle here, draw this curve and then solve this problem through and then resume and see my solution. Okay, so let's start with uh, drawing this curve. So we have something like this and we know that um, the radius is equal to 2000 feet. Okay. The length of the tangent or T is equal to 400 feet. And the station of PI is 103 plus 00. zero. Here is my PC and it asks for the station of PT or this point. So one thing that you need to keep in mind is that whenever we talk about the station of PI, we are moving on this line. Okay. Whenever we talk about the station of PT, we are moving 
on this line because of that if you just take the station of pi and add 400 or lengths of t to that because that length is equal to this length right if you do that it's not gonna get you to pt this is gonna take you to this point which is not where I want to be so if you just say that I'm gonna take 103 and add 400 feet or four stations and I get at 107 plus 00, zero that that is the wrong answer okay in fact if you want to find the right answer here you need to start from this point let me use a different color you need to start from this point you need to come back here whatever the station is there you need to add the links of the curve to that and you get to the station of PT so how do we get from PI to PC if from PI you subtract 400 feet or four stations you get to PC so then station of PC is quite easy it is equal to 103 minus four stations it is equal to 99 plus 00, zero. this is the station of PC now if I want to find station of PT what I can do is that I can start from station of PC which is 99 plus 00, zero and I can add L to that I just need to remember that L should be in stations so whatever you find for L in feet you need to divide it by 100 so really what I need to do here is to find L and if I find L I'm done I'm just go I'm just gonna go backward for station I'm gonna get to PC and then I'm gonna go forward L stations so if you want to find L the first thing that you need to do is to find the angle of the curve or in other words we want to find what is Delta so how do we find Delta what we know is T right we know T T is 400 is there any relationship between T Delta and another known parameter what are, what what other parameter do we know we also know what is r right so think about the relationship that i have shown you before that has delta t and r that's t equal to r into tangent of delta over 2 right so if you start with this we know that this is 400 we know that this is 2000 we can find delta so 400 is equal to 2000 into tangent of delta over 2 it means that tangent of delta over 2 is equal to um, 4000 over 2000 and if you do the math delta is going to be equal to 22.62 degrees so I have delta how do I find L so delta is known how do I find L there is another relationship between Delta and L and we are going to use that relationship so that we can find links of the care so that relationship is the last relationship that I showed you on the graph with, with the curve and everything L is equal to pi over 180 into R into Delta we know what is R, it is 2000 
we know what is delta it is 22.62 degrees so you just plug everything into equation and what you get is a length of 789.58 feet how many stations is this this is 7 plus 89.58 stations so from this point on it is very easy what we need to do so we know that the tangent length is 400 feet or four stations so from pc i go let me draw it one more time so what i want to do is that i have the station of pi from there i go back to pc that means that i subtract four stations from the station of pi so i'm going to get to 99 and then from there i'm going to go on the curve and i'm going to get to pt so i'm going to add 7 plus um, i forgot the value 89 something stations Seven plus eighty nine point fifty eight. And if you do the math, your station at PT is going to be one oh six plus eighty nine point five eight. One more time, if you say station of PT is PI plus four stations, that is mistake. That is a mistake. That is wrong because that point is going to be somewhere here okay let's move on all right let's start thinking about stopping side distance on a horizontal curve okay so let me draw one for you here let's say um, this is the direction of travel so if you are if you are traveling here uh, what is gonna limit your sight distance how much you can see on this curve so if if there is nothing actually the sight distance is a lot because if you just turn your head you can see a lot uh, on this curve right but what happens a lot of times is that maybe you have some obstruction here something that is sitting here either a retaining wall or maybe you are in a mountainous road so you have rocks and things like that so what happens in that condition is that you won't see what is happening here you won't see what is happening here in fact you would see what happens up to this point and beyond that point Is that area that we are blindsided and we don't see it so if for example you have a car that is stopped here we don't see it right so we need to design this curve so that it it gives enough length to us so that if something is stopped here right behind this point that we can see if something is stopped there and we are going to see it one fraction of time later we have enough time to stop the car safely so that the car stops before hitting that point right so a few things to keep in mind is that stopping side distance on horizontal curves is measured along the curve along the curve so all distance that you're going on this curve is measured and so far when we are when we have talked about 
a curve we were just talking about a line right but in fact here you don't have a line you have some traffic lanes and your vehicle if you just have one lane it's assumed to be put to, to be positions positioned exactly in the middle of that lane so when when we talk about stopping side distance and we talk about an R or a radius, we don't talk about the radius of this line nor this line. We talk about the radius of this line in the middle, the middle or the center of traveled lane. So for example, if you know the lane widths, so let's say it is W, and you know, for example, that uh, the radius of this point is R. The radius of travel lane would be R plus W2. But remember, this is not a generalized formulation. Why? Because if the radius that you have measured is up to this point, then the radius of the center line would be R minus W2. So you need to be very careful what kind of radius is given to you. Is it for this side? Is it for this side? Or maybe you have more lanes. It is for the center line of the road. And then you need to bring it to the center line of the traveled lane. And the other thing to keep in mind is that if you have several lanes, which one of them is the critical lane? the one that gives you the lowest radius and that's the most inner lane so always we talk about the lane that is closest to the center of the curve because if you provide enough side stopping side distance for for that lane you are good other lanes have enough room to stop So, for stopping side distance cal calculation, we use this figure, and this helps clarify a lot of things that we are using. So, here, this is the center line of the highway, okay? And here, we are assuming that we have only two lanes on this, on this graph. We can have more lanes, and it make some minor changes in what we are doing so the angle of the curve is delta and the angle that corresponds to stopping side distance we call it delta s how much is our stopping side distance in this case how long it is in this case it is this long Oops. Right? The length of the curve is start it starts from P sub C and ends at P sub T uh, P C and ends at P T. So that's the length of the curve. And M sub S is clearance. The distance of sight obstruction from the center of the travel lane. So this M, this M sub S that you see here is very similar to M that you saw a couple of slides ago when I was talking about the entire curve. This delta S is very similar to delta on that curve and SSD is very similar to L on that curve so you can see that we have we have that original curve I need to clean this up now and that original curve is shown here with L R and Delta and the curve that corresponds to our stop stopping side distance its length now is SSD so it's now this part 
its radius is r sub v and its angle is delta s so all the equations that we had for l r and delta are gonna work if you just replace l in those with ssd r in those with r sub v and delta in those with delta sub s in the slide that i showed you uh, in the last class so what we want to do is to determine the central angle or delta sub s that corresponds to an arc whose length is equal to stopping side distance so how many degrees you need when you are traveling on that curve for a length of stopping side distance and remember that the radius of that curve is not r anymore it is r v so one of the things that we did assume in the previous slide was that l was greater than ssd if l is smaller than ssd you won't be able to provide enough stopping side distance so this is a key assumption here if you remember we had an equation that was l is equal to pi over 180 into r into delta so what i'm doing is that i'm replacing or i'm substituting l with ssd i'm substituting r by r sub v and delta by delta s if you do that this is the equation that you get and if you solve that equation for delta s you get this equation here so this equation gives you the angle corresponding to that stopping side distance based on the stopping side distance and r sub v now if you remember we had another equation that was giving us m based on r and delta m equal to r in 1 minus cosine of data delta so what we have done here is that we have replaced m with m sub s r with r sub v and then delta with delta s and then for delta s i have brought this term and i have put it here so if you do that you're going to get this equation that i have here m sub s is equal to r sub v into 1 minus cosine of 90 into ssd divided by pi divided by r sub v we can solve this equation for ssd and get this equation so this equation is going to give us the stopping side distance based on the radius of the center line of the critical lane the most inner lane and it shows up here too and it shows up here too and m sub s the distance of the side obstruction from the center line of the critical lane okay so these are all the equations that we need so that we can determine the uh, stopping side distance on a horizontal curve and find out um, either either ssd or if we have ssd and l we can say that how far the obstruction should be from uh, the center line of the critical lane so what i want to do is that i want to go through an example in the next slide with you so that we see how everything that we talked about here works so in this example we have a horizontal curve on a four lane highway and one thing that um, you want to keep in mind whenever we say four lane highway six lane highway we mean we are talking about the total number of lanes so four lane highway 
means that I have two lanes in each direction. In this four lane highway, my super elevation is 6%. Central angle is 40 degrees. The road has 10 feet lanes and 8 feet shoulders on both sides with retaining walls right at the shoulder. So it means that at the shoulder, so um, we have something like this. So we have two lanes going this way two lanes going this way and then we have the shoulder and then at the shoulder we have a retaining wall so what that means is that everything past the shoulder is obstructed and you cannot see so this is 8 feet this is 10 10 10 and 10 okay so the PT is at station 322 and PI as at station 320 plus 08. So one thing to keep in mind is that when we talk about PT and PI and everything, we are talking about the center line of the curve, which is here. Okay. So PT, when the curve ends, ends is at 322 plus 50 pi is at 320 plus 08 and the question is asking for the highest safe speed and it wants you to round it to the nearest five miles per hour So I have already drawn this for you, but um, I would like for you to, to pause the video here, go through these, and this is one of, one of the longer examples, so probably it's going to take you 10 to 15 minutes to, to, do, to do this example. And when you're done, um, come back to the video and watch how we go through the details of this example. Okay, so let's take, take a look at the solution and I have put some key input on the top of the slide so that we don't forget them. So we want to start with finding the station of PT, PC. And the reason that I want to do that, and here I'm focusing only on the center line of the curve, is that... We had a piece of information. We know that PT is at 322 plus 50. And we know that PI is at 320 plus 08. And we know that we can find the station of PC by either subtracting T This is T from the station of PI or by subtracting L, which is this length, from the station of PT. So both of these are going to take me to the station of PC. So what I can say actually is that I can say, uh, what, what I can say is that station of PI minus T is equal to station of PT minus L. So if I do that, then I can start calculating some of the unknowns that I have here. So I can say the station of PI, and I'm writing it now in feet, minus T is equal to station of PT minus L. 
For t, I'm going to replace it with r into tangent of delta over 2. For l, I'm going to substitute that with pi over 180 into r into delta. So I have delta. Delta is given to me. So the only unknown here is r. And remember, r is to the center line of the curve. So I can determine r by replacing the value of delta into the equation. I'm going to have 724.2. What is r sub v? So let me draw the curve one more time. So this is the center line. I have two lanes on the top. I have two lanes at the bottom so this is r i want to know sorry let me this is r i want to know rv so rv here is going to be equal to r minus this width minus half of this width this width is 10 this one is going to be 5 and that's what I have done here so my r sub v would be 709.2008 feet so we, we, we could successfully find r and r sub v and now we want to continue to find what is the maximum speed that a vehicle can go through and be safe on this uh, horizontal curve. And there are really two things, two main things that we need to consider. And I want you to think about it. So if you are driving on a horizontal curve, what are the things that are going to influence your speed. The first thing that comes in my comes to my mind is my vehicle's cornering capability. So am I do I have enough radius and enough super elevation and enough friction that my vehicle is not going to drop drive off the curve okay that's the first thing the second thing is that do i see enough on the curve that i can stop safely so let's say that you have a curve that if you go 50 miles per hour on that curve you're not gonna drive off the curve but in order to be able to stop safely you need to be going at most 35 miles per hour so what is going to be the speed that you're going uh, going to use on that curve it's not going to be 50 it's not going to be 45 or 40 it's going to be 35 because if you go more than 35 you're not going to have enough time to stop your vehicle if you see something that's stopped on the curve now let's take a look. Take, now let's take a, uh, think about uh, the opposite condition. What if you can go at most 50 miles per hour on that curve, and you're not gonna drive off the curve at 50? But if you go up to 70 miles per hour, you can still safely stop your car if there is something on the road so what is going to be the highest speed that you're going to travel on that road it's going to be 50 right not 70 because if you go more than 50 you're going to go off the road right so now in the next couple of slides i want to do that i want to find what is the maximum safe speed that i can go on the road and don't drive off the road and also what is the maximum speed that I can be traveling there and if I want to stop my car 
I have enough time and distance to stop it before I hit something, an object that is on the road. So I'm going to start with vehicle cornering capabilities. So we find the length of the road. Uh, so that is going to be just putting everything into this equation. L is going to be equal to pi over 180 divided by R into delta. So the length is going to be 505 plus point, uh, 505.588 station of PC is going to be equal to station of PT minus L so if you just do that you get this station for PC and now we are going to check for vehicle cornering requirements and we go to table 3.1 and we know that the super elevation is 6%. That was given to us. Okay. So if you have a super elevation of 6%, if the design speed is 50 miles per hour from the table, our R sub V is going to be 833. So if you are going at 50 miles per hour, you need a radius of 833. What we have is 709. So that is not adequate. We cannot go at 50 miles per hour. Let's try 45. If you go at 45 miles per hour, the R sub V that is required is 643 feet. How much do we have? We have 709. So that is adequate. So from vehicle cornering capabilities we can go at most up to 45 miles per hour and remember these numbers are coming from table 3.1 so let's say 45 miles per hour in our memory now we are gonna work with the stopping side distance so how much clearance do we have? The shoulder width is 8 and the lane width is 10. So this is my shoulder that is 8. This is my lane, lane width that is 10 and we are talking about the center line of the critical lane. So this is another 5. So my M sub S is equal to 8 plus 5 right or 13 feet that is the amount of clearance that I have so let's go to table 3.1 again and find the required stopping side distance for a speed of 45 why do I start from 45 because 45 was the highest speed that I could go from cornering, vehicle cornering capabilities perspective. So if I go with the speed of 45, my stopping side distance is going to be 360. I'm going to put it in this equation and that is going to give us, give me the required M sub S. So the required M sub S is equal to 22.72. How much clearance do I have? 13. How much do I need? 22. So the need is more than what I have. So 45 is not going to work. What do I do next? I'm going to reduce the speed by 5 miles per hour. And that would give me a speed of 40. So if my speed is 40, the stopping side distance that I get from that is 305. So if I put my R sub V, which is 709, here, here, and stopping side distance of 305, I get a required M sub S of 16.33. My required side clearance is 16.33. I have 13 feet. So this is not going to work either. I'm going to reduce the speed to to 35 now another 5 miles per hour reduction so with that my stopping side distance from the table and again same table table 
is going to be 250 feet. I'm going to put everything in the equation and I'm going to get a required side clearance of 10.99 feet. So this is less than 13. It means that 35 miles per hour works. If you remember from vehicle cornering capabilities, we found 45. Here we found 35. So, so the lowest of the two is going to govern what we can do and what is the fastest speed that we can go there. So here is the last slide that I wanted to share with you on chapter three. Uh, make sure to go through these in time and uh, from next week we start with chapter five. Thanks.